Sweeties, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim and thank you all so much for all the love and support that you're showing me here with. So today we'll be talking something very important and it's about this brother who actually said that black community is toxic. And why did he say black community is toxic? He actually went out to explain why he said so. That in black community that we always look for a way to put everything on white people instead of holding ourselves accountable for what we are doing. And then he started saying that why is it that drugs are so much like you know people that use drugs in black community it's so much and all that and he was like and we keep saying black uh, white men are responsible for it and i am going to say that uh, for anybody using drugs before the use of this drug the black community was clean without drugs not until cia planted drugs in black community and started introducing it to black people one after another one after another right why did they start planting drugs in black community because they felt like these people are going to be very successful and then do them what they have done to them you all already knew that some black communities were destroyed and after they destroy black community they come back again and build another one that one actually got them like very scared and they decided to use drugs and mass incarceration to uh even some pupil too to destroy black community which they actually eventually did at some point let's get into this video Trigger warning, if you're easily offended, you might want to run away from this one because this one's going to unsettle some nerves and shake some feathers. I, I'm going to start hosting conversations in the barbershop and I'm going to call it Cuts and Convo. Um, I was talking to my barber and the guys that were at the shop about, and I forget how we even got on the topic of conversation, but the conversation around, somebody brought up, you know, the white man is responsible for the problems that black men face in America. And I said, okay, so hold on. The white man is the root cause for black men leaving the house. The white man is the root cause for the crack epidemic. I asked him that plainly. I said, okay, so the drug epidemic, fatherless homes in the 60s, all of that, that's the white man's fault. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the white man put crack in our neighborhoods. The white man put, okay, okay, I hear you. So the white man put crack in the neighborhoods. Tell me this. Who still made the decision to sell drugs to your own brothers and sisters? We did. Who still made the decision to take something that is illicit and do and, and make illegal money through illicit means? See, here's 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 the problem. Here's what we do in the black community that I've noticed. Without question, I've noticed this. We love blaming and pushing accountability on everybody but ourselves. Men want to say in our community, well, women are out earning us because the white man may, you know, the white man put these rules in place to employ black women because women feel multiple. I mean, it is true. Women feel multiple, multiple diversity and inclusion standards. They, they're female and they're black. God forbid they mix race. I hear that. But as men, somewhere I heard Kevin Samuels say we should employ our women. Somewhere I heard uh, Malcolm X say that a nation can rise no higher than, than, than the status to which it elevates its women. Somewhere I heard that the greatest thing that a black man can have standing beside him, in front of him, or behind him is a black woman. Somewhere I heard that the collective consciousness of black America can save the soul of any nation, in particular the United States. Somewhere I heard that when you that the most dangerous thing to any oppressor is a collective critical thinking capable uh, uh collective of people that are the ones that are being oppressed somewhere i heard you were born looking like your parents you're going to die looking like the decisions you chose to make so the question is this when you look at the crack epidemic when you look at the fatherless the, the, the fatherlessness crisis in the black community ain't no white man no white man has anything to do with that no white man has anything to do with that the only difference between how they were able to gain their power and how we're able to stay at the bottom of the barrel is a conscious choice. You are responsible, not for how you start in this life, but you are responsible for how you end up. And as a society of people, the black race has chosen to end up remaining, trying to fight, being trying to fight to be the best while still at the bottom. Period, point blank, end of story. So unless and until we change that idea, that basic level thought process nothing 
about this situation we're in is going to change. Because, see, when you go up, like, I'm, I'm going to leave this from Baby Boy. It makes so much sense. You got to learn the difference between guns and butter. Now, what are the guns? That's stocks and bonds. That's real estate, artwork. You know, you know it's, it's, it's shit that appreciates with value. What's the butter? Cars, clothes, jewelry, all that other bullshit that don't mean shit after you buy it. That's what it's all about. Guns and butter, baby. Dumb mother. But what are black people spending their money on? Black people are the number one consumers of products. When we got our stimulus checks, where did everybody go? We ran to Louis Vuitton, Gucci, ran to go buy some guns, ran to go buy all that. We wasn't buying landing masks. When we was getting the PPP loans, what was we doing with that? What was we doing with that PPP money? Spending it, blowing it in the strip club. That's what black folk were doing. You tell people to do something beyond being basic, black folk don't want to hear that. How many black people you know actually got life insurance? How many black people you know got good health insurance? How many black people you know leaving a legacy for their kids? As a black community, we should not have to be having GoFundMes for funerals. I'm sorry, it shouldn't be the case. Wake up, smell the coffee. If the white man's so dangerous, why are we, why are we wasting our money on things that only are going to benefit them? Why are we not putting our time, our effort, our resources into bettering our families first and our brothers and friends and, and everybody else second? Why are we not doing this? You know why? Because we want to stay stuck. In mass, we want to stay stuck. The few of us that, 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 that have the mindset to get out and want to change the game, everybody got something to say about us. But until you cannot solve any problem at the same level of thinking you were at when the problem arose. I hope you all follow me unless I got you thoroughly confused. Okay, this is all for this video, and he has a point. But then, some are we okay? We we can agree to disagree and disagree to agree, right? Now let's talk about uh, how CIA planted drugs in black community. You all already know that, maybe like, but just let me like you know, refreshing our memories again. Number one, I know that a CIA already agreed that. You know, during the uh, black uh, epidemic, uh, pandemic, I mean, drug pandemic and all that, all black people were not doing drugs before. Black people were all clean. Black people were just having, a, like, it was just a great community for them. And then they looked at that great community and they asked themselves, what are we going to do to make this? Because, you know, you already know how they were. They are like, you know, already bombed some other communities and all that, which they bombed and black people will grow again, another community and all that. That alone got them scared. So they were like, what are we going to do in order to destabilize this community because they are scared that this community is going to grow up eventually and become something better. I mean, they are going to be better off without us. And they, all they wanted was just a way to hold black people down so that, because they are scared that what if happened, like, what if uh, this will becomes more better than us? It means that they are going to like do us what we've done to them right so all these things they planned and they were like how do we get into that how do we make all this how do we destabilize them so they decided to plant drugs which like you know caused so many harm in black community he was saying are we going to continue to blame? we will blame them i will blame them i don't care if anybody's blaming them or not i will blame them for planting that into the community and destabilizing the community and all of a sudden drug became a pandemic and then mass incarcerations sometimes when we talk we want us to be more knowledgeable about what happened what 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 made something like this why did it start up how did it start let's how did it start it was them being envious and then when those drugs were planted they were already telling people yo you know you can do something like this try to sell this drug cracks in community i mean people are gonna buy it and all that when they introduced that people started using it and all of a sudden, it started causing so much problem. So I am saying if they did not plant the drugs and started introducing it because they planted it and started introducing it to people, I am sure there won't be anything like crack epidemic, epidemic and all that. 
I might be here, I don't know, mixing up my words and all that, but please, I hope you understand where I am going to. So if you say we are always trying to hold them, uh, hold uh, uh, colored people accountable for our own problems, I, we are going to hold them accountable for planting that. And then let's talk about spending. We all already know. I don't know people that go around uh, looking for Louis Vuitton. Is it not when you are done eating, when you finish eating food, then you can talk about Louis Vuitton. But then I am going to say that if you all are, th for if you want to buy Louis Vuitton, you should make sure that you are already balanced, that you have a lot of things going up for you. I'm not saying people shouldn't buy uh, Louis Vuitton. But buying Louis Vuitton with just $50 in the bag that you are carrying, so what does that even mean? When you are looking for financial financial freedom, there is there are some things you do not buy, right? But I am not going on that because I don't know people that, uh, some people, food is what they are looking for. They are not even thinking of Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and all that. So if he is saying that, People, how many people now? Let me ask you, how many people did you see that got their stimulus and used it on Louis Vuitton? Because as it, as it stands, a lot of people are struggling with paying rent. And when you are struggling with paying rent, is it Louis Vuitton that you are thinking of? Or if you are paying your child's tuition fee and all that, is it Louis Vuitton that you are thinking of? I am sure you, will, you wouldn't be thinking of that, right? And for people that choose that, what they want to do is buy jewelries and all that. Who buys jewelries when his life is not already like? Except you are investing on it. Like tomorrow, if things get bad, you can sell it. Some people, what they do is probably buy gold and when they have need for money, they sell it and use it for something. But there are like, uh, oh, there is this man that I, I sometimes talk, that talked about how uh, uh, pump colored people, all they do is introduce some certain things to black community. The man, I actually thought he was, he is European. Not until you all started telling me that he is not European, that he is a black man because he looks really white, right? He was saying that there are some things black people shouldn't be caught doing. Instead of buying Gucci and all that, you can have your life insurance. So, are we agree to this? Agree. So, if they did not plan the drugs in black community, I am sure cracks and all that wouldn't be black problem. Mass incarceration wouldn't be what we are. Even most of the people that were incarcerated did not do anything. Because I have been seeing stories. Sometimes we really need to listen because some people do not even understand what is going on in black community. I have been reading, I have been seeing so many things happen. Some people are, are incarcerated for nothing. Sincerely speaking, just because probably a pump colored person lied and all that, that is it. Anyways, you all heard what this video is all about. I am not trying to, but I am saying that there are some things we shouldn't be caught doing. Especially if you are looking for a financial freedom, except you want to live off your life, like you get your salary, maybe of $2,000 or $3,000 or $4,000, you pay your rent, you pay your bills, and then pay your insurance account, probably car insurance, where and all that and you are having probably 300 400 dollars left or nothing even left i said this is how you want to live all your life i know inflation is really like killing everybody right now so there are some funny things you shouldn't be caught buying as a stand rather use it for something reasonable and calling black people toxic is that please don't do you all stop all of that because of anything that is happening in black community is also happening in other people's community but they don't come around to start screaming and all that and calling themselves uh, toxic see you all in my next video bye for now